Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Glenn. A while back I did a video on automating the roof of my observatory. Uh, at the time I was uh, remoting in with an app and a Wi-Fi relay switch and I could open and close the roof when not at home. What I wanted to do was get everything working through Nina so it was all part of a sequence. So working with Joan Navarra from Colorado and I must say, I need to give uh, most of the credit here to Joe because he's done an amazing amount of work on this um, and research and he's done a, a brilliant job. But basically, we have finally got our roofs working with an Arduino, uh, which is uh, one of these, and uh, Nina. So these are inexpensive. Uh, the actual Arduino is about £20 in the UK and I've got a relay shield that you need as well, little relay switches that sits on top, and that's about seven pounds, six, seven pounds, I think they were. So, not expensive at all. The only other thing you need, um, well, we added on a thing called a screw shield, so basically, rather than just having pins that you push in with wires, which could fall out, you buy a screw shield and that gives you actual screws uh, to hold the wires in tightly. The other part you're going to need is some uh, sensors and these are just literally security sensors that you'd put on a window for an alarm system. It came in a kit of three and you're going to need two. There is a very slight difference between my setup and Joe's and it will depend on what motor board you've got inside the motor that you've bought for your roof will denote how you set it up but we'll go into those details a little bit later. The next part of the video is Joe and I getting all of the software together and loading it onto the computer and then getting the code inside the Arduino. Once we've finished that, we're then gonna talk about how to wire it and set everything up. Hey Glenn, how are you? Hi Joe, yeah, I'm really good, thanks mate. You good? I'm, I'm awesome today. I'm super excited because I've been wanting to get this completed for a long time. And we finally got it figured out. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of testing, Joe. My roof's never opened and closed so much in all of its life. <laughs> well, opened, stayed open. <laughs> closed, refused to open. <laughs> it said well, it was closed when it was open I know. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of trial and error but we've got it yeah and, we've got um, it now i just like to go over the software installation for all the viewers that are looking to do the same thing yeah definitely well i've got an arduino board here joe so we can we can go through that process of what we do and how we get it on the board and how we get the program on the board as well at the end. So that's okay, cool. Great. So All right, then. I emailed, I emailed you some code. Yes. And I've got it shared on a Google drive and I will put that in the description below for the video. Yep. So everybody can get that code. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we need to do to get the code onto the Arduino and to connect to it is to download the Arduino software. Right, so I'm on the Arduino website. And then you'll want to go to software. Yep. At the top there, that tab, yeah. And go ahead and download that Arduino IDE 1.8.15. It's best to and get it on the it. apps, isn't it? Oh, you know what? I ended up getting mine on the app too. I think you could do it either way. Um, I got it on the app because it seemed easier. To, to bring up the App Store and just uh, download and install it there. Please, please excuse me. I just pushed the wrong button. Go away. He's trying to sell me something. <laughs> uh, just download. Yep. Yeah. Um, and there it is. Arduino IDE. That's what they want. Yeah. Let me get. <clears throat> And all of this is really fast. I'm not even sure you'll have to fast forward anything in here. Um, it's just installed and I've just launched it. So okay. it comes up with launch and it's uh, saying, yep, do you want to allow access? Which I do. And you can minimize that or close that. Now. It's behind, that's why I'm going to close that. Yeah. 
So here's so, the Arduino ready to go. Okay. And what you want to do is take the file that I sent you, and you could either open it in Notepad or, and copy and paste the contents in here in this window, or you can copy the file that that yeah. you get when you go there or, and and open it. You can copy it to your computer and then open it. Yeah, there. so I've got mine in downloads. So if I say open file and I go to downloads and Just find a sketch. There it is, it's sketch, but this one here. Right. You'll you'll want this the one that says sketch. And there it is. Well, to, okay, to Joe, go I've got the, the Arduino. So I'm just going to okay. plug in the USB to it, which is connected to my computer. All right. And it's uh, pinged up that it's got a little green light on it as well. Don't know if you cool. can see that. There, oh, look, there it is. <laughs> so it's all ready to go. So that's connected. So now I go to tools. Yes, go to tools, and it should tell you what com port you are connected or serial port that you're connected to so you're saying com port th com 3 okay so that's on com 3 okay so what do i do now joe do i need to load this into the actual arduino yeah so now you yes yeah, so now you click on the arrow the button with the arrow inside of it which yeah this one here and it says upload next to it so click that and it should send this program to the Arduino board. That's it, yeah. So it's With saying compiling up. sketch, da, 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 uploading, and it's now said it's done uploading. One question I wanted to ask you, Joe, when I was doing this, I noticed there's a tick here which says verify. Is that just to verify that some what you've got here is actually uploaded correctly? Is that what that does? I think that it verifies the syntax, the, the program. So oh. if you've got syntax errors or something. Um, I found that it, by ticking it, it, it just know. verifies it all. And it, I don't know if that's something right. you've got to do or not, but it you, doesn't. You don't have to, but it's quicker than loading it. So if you want to check it before you load it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, all right. that's all in, Joe. So that's that looks good. So, And that's all we need to do with this. So I can close um, that down now, yeah? Close that down. Okay. And the next thing that you're going to need is the, um, I think the, I mean, you need two pieces. You need the rolling roof computer interface for ASCOM. Right. It's Should we do that first? RRCI. So, yes, let's go to this page. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to have all the links in the description below. Yes, everything will be there for everyone. So we um, scroll this, down on this and there's um, the ASCOM about driver. This project. And so there's the ASCOM, the ASCOM driver, driver and Sky plugin can be found here, and the ASCOM driver can be found here. And that's where you want to click, right there. The ASCOM driver. Yes, and that will get you. It's, it automatically downloads that R RCI dot zip file, and of course you'll want to extract that and run it. Or I think you can just run it from inside the zip. Yes, you can, can't you? You could just run it here, can I? I believe so, yes. Um, you'll it's just making on... sure I want to run it, and I do. Oh, run it. yeah, it's... Ah. Well, okay, so, um, yeah, like Joe, it comes up. It just said, um, are you sure you want to download it? Because it's not Windows, it will ask you that, so you say yes. Yeah. So I'm just installing everything in. That's the ASCOM driver installed in there, Joe. So that's good. All right, that's that's it Excellent. for that program. So that's that and done. We have just one more program to install, mm -hmm. and um, you need to go to Interactive Astronomy, and under the support page, you're here, and it's the Skyroof software setup. Sky this Roof one setup. here. Yes. Like that. Make sure it's downloaded in. They're all very quick to download in, which is good. Very tiny programs. They're really just drivers. Right, bear with me a second, Joe. Let me just click this. 
Okay, so I've clicked um, download on that, Joe. I do think it's oh, it's gone behind. There we are. That's where it is. Okay. <laughs> so we need to say next. It's always I love it when things go behind. Yeah, but behind the other focus. Yeah. Window. It's supposed to be a window. Aren't you supposed to be able to see through windows? <laughs> <laughs> So just clicking through these, making sure they're There's, installing. Correct. There's really nothing to change. Um, and then there's install the control motor driver. Yes, we'll need to install that too. Yeah, that's it connecting to the R RCI ASCOM that we yeah. put in. Okay. And that's everything installed. So yeah. I can exit, there we go, and it's just come across and it's now connected and we, this is a standard motor that we use for these, isn't it? With the yes, it's rack right. and pinion. And this is the controller. So and you so can actually program, control it with this, can't you? You can control it with this, uh, but the, the end result is to get Nina to control it. You do need this program in order for Nina to control it. Yeah, Nina works through this like Nina does work through EQ mod for the with the telescope that's controls. So that's it's correct. the same sort of thing but it's just doing the roof with that, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So that's all you need. Um you just need to wire up the Arduino now um in your observatory. Yeah. With the sensors. And um there's two different boards, motor boards. Glenn and I, I sent you a link to yeah those. I've got them here because we me and you have got two different types haven't we yes so I've got so this I'm... one which is known as the, the standard control board right and what you'll need to do well go ahead and explain what you do yeah so there was a slight way. difference with with your one you had a open close and stop um, section on your board and I don't have that. I that I only have the separate ones, which is open, close, stop here, and the and the com port. So I have to connect to close and com, and then there's a three dim switches here. And number one, it says here, if you switch number one on, it turns it into that one setting. Then that the, gives you the, the open, OSC. close, stop. But yeah. I don't actually have the stop facility on mine. I only have open and close. So there's a slight difference. Um, and your board, if I scroll yeah, down, is the intelligent board. And if you want to talk us through that, Joe. Right. So on the intelligent control board, um, really it's just pin number five, which says OSC, which stands for open, stop, and close. And you'll connect that to one and then the normally open right next to it for the common ground. And if you've got a board like like yours glenn you'll want to follow or you want to follow glenn's video if you've got a board like his and you'll want to follow my video if you've got a board like mine on yep. the actual wiring part of it and there's just a few little differences small. with the sensors and things but 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 yeah they both work and there may be other boards out there but this, these are the only two that we know about yeah yeah, so I'm hoping that they're very similar boards, or they're very similar. If you've got a different board, between our two videos, you should be able to figure it out. If you've got a different yeah, I think it will cover all different board. types. One of the differences uh, which might help people, Joe, is with my uh, motor, I've got like a manual stopping um, sensors at either end with like ramps that hit a sensor that hangs down, whereas on yours it's magnets. Yes. <clears throat> I'm wondering whether that's, uh, you know, if you get one with magnets, you're going to get this type of board. And if you get one with the manual, you'll get my type of board. Um, that's possible. Mm. I mean, I, I can't tell you for no, sure. No, I don't know is. either. They, they don't it's... seem to list what type of board you've got on the different models that are available. So, yeah. Yeah. So if you're going, if you haven't got your motor yet and you, and you want to get the intelligent board motor, I'm not sure how you can tell. I think we just got we just both bought a motor and mine came with one board yours came with another board but we got them both working mm. so we certainly have right well joe I, I think that's all of the software isn't it that's it excellent right so brilliant thanks ever so much for your for help with that joe and um i'll go and uh make sure everything's in place and then when it's not working i'll give you a call 
<laughs> for sure you know you can yeah. uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna wire mine up and you can yeah. wire yours up and then we'll show how nina controls them both yeah in each other's videos yeah excellent thanks ever so much joe brilliant work yeah no problem thanks Glenn. yeah see you soon bye mate right, bye okay so that's all the software downloaded and the code on the arduino so the next part of the video is going to be Joe showing you how to wire it in and then it's going to switch to how I've wired in my sensors because that's the area that's going to be slightly different and um, I'll explain that as I show you my section. So first step is to mount the Arduino board. Next we're going to take our relay board and we're going to set it into the Arduino board. Here is the relay shield now correctly mounted onto the Arduino board. The next thing we're going to do to dress this up is to add this screw shield. And I got this separately off of Amazon and the screw shield goes in here and you got to get the pins lined up and then you just push it in. What this does is instead of putting the pin that I had in my prototype just directly in gives you some screw holes to mount the wire directly in. So here we have all of the components that we need to make this work. We have our Arduino Uno right here. We have the relay shield sitting on top of it and I've got the screw shield sitting on top of this. So our first connection I'm going to connect the normal the open roof position up to the first pin which is pin number 11 and we're going to tighten it down and this is why you have the screw shield now what what i recommend is that you put all of your cables together before you plug this into the board but i found doing it this way at the moment makes it much easier for you to see what i'm doing because it's mounted up on the on the arduino itself Okay, our next sensor is going to go into 12. This sensor is the sensor for when the roof is supposed to be closed. Our cable for the sensor inside and close it up, tighten it up. And lastly, we want to connect our ground to where it says ground. So these are our only inputs. We have three inputs. Number 11 is going to the roof open sensor. Number 12 is going to the roof close sensor and ground is going to ground. And the ground on the other side is connected to both grounds on the sensors. I wanted to show my control board. Now everyone's control board is going to be different. So I just wanted to, to show that. And I wanted to show that the Ground is going to ground. I'm not sure if you could see the, the board from here uh, with this camera angle, but you need to look at the pinout on your gate motor and you need to find the ground and what they call the OSC. And it stands for open, stop, closed. And it's normally open. And you want to connect that. You want to connect your hot wire to the normally open. And now we're going to go back to the relay shield. And I don't need to install a screw shield on this side because the relays already have one. And I've chosen relay three because it's readily available here. And I'm going to um, use the normally open. And that corresponds with the normally open going into the controller. And I'm gonna set that in here. And next we'll do the ground. And the ground's always in the middle of this relay. So there's your pinout. You've got your normally open and your ground from relay number three going into your gate control motor. So Joe's board is slightly different to mine in that I haven't got um, one controller for open, close and stop. I've actually got an open, a close, a stop, and a common. So I've got two wires in here because I've got my other um, Wi-Fi relay that I can log into to get things working. But basically, there's a little switch here, 
and number one if it's switched up it's got the three working where you have open close and stop and you can control it all from different relays if you switch it down into the one position it turns it into a one switch uh, operation so you literally just go into this middle one and this will open stop and then close when operated so if you've got this board you will need to switch this down to one um, and it's called an X7 board at the bottom and that will turn that into a single operation board rather than a three operation board. So that's everything wired in on the board. What the uh, main difference will be for everybody is where you put your open and your closed sensors because depending on your roof design and where you can actually mount things uh, that's going to differ for everyone. So I'll show you what I've done with my sensors and then um, we'll then run through a sequence showing you how to operate the roof with the uh, roof controller interface and then we'll show you it working through Nina. When I get on to Nina I do need to explain that the latest nightly build of Nina which is number 137 there is a fault with it. It has been reported and they are looking at it. Apparently a framework update by Windows has actually broken quite a few of the ASCOM links with Nina. And they are actually working to get all of those that fixed. Uh, the nightly build that I've got downloaded that works with this with no issues is number 97. So it's quite a while back, it's 40 versions back. But they are in the process of trying to sort it out. So hopefully they'll get that fixed. Um, what I would suggest is if you want to use it within a routine, uh, try and keep one of the nightly builds that will do that or we just need to wait until an updated uh, nightly build comes in. But let me show you what I've done with the sensors. So let me show you here. So this is the uh, sensor for the roof in the open position. And that runs in. Uh, at the moment, uh, I haven't got a cover for the Arduino, so I've just made a makeshift sort of cover here so it doesn't get any moisture on it at night. But uh, that's only temporary. And if we look at the other end here, if I just move my scope out of the way a second so we can get past. And this is the closed sensor. Now my roof uh, doesn't always stop in exactly the same place. Uh, mine's got the mechanical ramps to tell it when to stop. Uh, so the one that Joe's got has got magnetic uh, sensors, so I think his stops in exactly the same position every time. So because mine varies a little bit, I've put a second magnetic part just slightly offset so it's made it wider. And that definitely makes sure then that it gets picked up by the open and close sensor every time. So now what I'd like to show you is the RC, oh, it's the rolling roof uh, control interface um, and this will report at the moment it's showing that it's closed and the scope is in the part position which is this uh, green bit here. If I click open it will go into the open position and when it gets there it will say it's open. What I'm going to do, I've made this a bit big, bear with me. I've made it even bigger. That's better. I'm just going to unpark the scope and you'll notice on the control panel that the scope goes yellow here saying it's unparked. This is a safety feature now that if you try and operate the roof, it won't do anything without parking the scope first. So um, in a normal situation, if we push close, the roof would just close and it would do the opposite of what it did for opening. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let that go like that and I'm going to show you what happens if you push close but in the unparked position. It will automatically park the scope and then shut the roof and it will give a series of five beeps once it's happy that the scope is parked for a pause and then it will shut the roof. So we just let that finish. It's just coming down. So I have to have my part position differently to the home position because of the uh, height clearance. It will hit the scope otherwise. So I don't know if you could hear the beeping over the seagull that's giving it large above my head. 
but uh, it beeps five times and then it shuts the roof. And you'll see there that it will then be in the roof closed position. And that's, uh, that's that sequence. I'm going to show, show you uh, how it works within Nina. So you'd leave the sky roof uh, controller open and within Nina, if you go to uh, the settings here, it will come up uh, in a drop down menu. Actually, if I, um, if I close this for you and I do the uh, drop down, you'll, it'll be in there, it'll be RRCI. And if you click on here, you actually go to the um, settings for that controller. So if I connect it, we can open the roof and we can close the roof with the controls on Nina manually. But what we want to do is put it into a sequence. So what I've got is I've built a sm very small sequence here. I'm just going to refresh it. And it's basically got open dome shutter, unpark the scope. Uh, it's going to slew to a position. Then it's going to park the scope and it's going to close the dome. Obviously, if this was one of your sequences, in the middle you would have all of your acquisition date, uh, uh, sequence for getting your data, etc. So, if I push play, fingers crossed, it'll all work. So we start with the roof open. That's a good start. Next, it'll unpark the scope and then it will slew it to a position. And you can see there on the sky roof control panel, again, it's uh, highlighting that the scope is in the unpart position, so you cannot now close the roof. So once it's there, it'll settle for five seconds, and then it'll go into the park scope. And then once parked, the scope unparked should go green and say that the scope is parked and then it should close the roof. And there's your sequence all done. So working lovely in Nina. And uh, it's really nice to have it like that because in the morning where I used to have to wake up and uh, push a remote control or log in to shut the roof, now once it's finished doing all of its acquisition, it will shut the roof for me and uh, it's all done. So uh, I'm really happy with that. We just need to get the latest nightly Nina build uh, fixed so that this works in that too because at the moment it doesn't work it basically it'll open the roof but then it disconnects itself while opening the roof you can reconnect and then it will close the roof when it gets to that part but again it will disconnect when it's closing the roof so it's it's glitchy and not working how it should so thank you once again for uh, joining me on my channel I hope that the information I provided for you today has been useful um, this was a solution that I've been working on for some time with Joe and I want to thank him for all of his hard work because um, <clears throat> he, did a, he did a great job on that as always in the description below will be uh, all links that are required for the equipment that I've used uh, where I've bought it from and links to all of the software that you might need uh, to get this working. If you do have any questions, uh, pop them in the comment section and I will do everything I can to answer them. I will only be able to help you though if you've gone for a very similar system. Um, I know how this one works and I might be able to help you if you've gone a different route but uh, I can't promise anything but I'll certainly do whatever I can. But anyway, Thanks ever so much for uh, sticking with me and uh, hopefully I'll see you again soon. So until next time, please take care and I wish you all clear skies.